Okay. Uh, my talk will, will be very elementary. I think a uh, graduate student with basic knowledge will understand everything. Uh, I already got several times some critics from Misha Verbitsky who named this technique low tech. So, uh, well, on the other hand, uh, the fact this theorem I will sketch a proof here, this theorem yet has no uh, high level technology to prove. And this will be a problem I will present at the end. Okay, so uh, I will start with a uh, known definition, a curve or Riemann surface, closed uh, surface with constant curvature minus one. Uh, is the curve, uh, uh, the curve that, a curve that admits a degree to ramified covering uh, of a Riemann sphere uh, is called hyperlytic. I will take genus more or, or equal to two to, to get a hyperbolic situation. So we can see that there is a hyperlytic involution. This is ramified covering. So we have this involution, and this sphere is just quotient by, uh, by hyperlytic involution. We take a um, universal covering, which is hyperbolic plane, and we can lift hyperlytic involution to to some involution, some reflection of uh, hyperbolic plane uh, that preserves orientation. So uh, we do the following. We take the fundamental group embedded in, in the group of, isometry of isometries of hyperbolic plane and generate by this fundamental group sitting here and this lifting of hyperlytic involution generate some group HN. This is our main hero of my talk. Uh, this group can be described in this way. As an abstract group, just uh, we take uh, n uh, by Riemann -Hur Hurwitz, uh, we can calculate the number of ramification points. It will be two g, g plus one, and uh, a more symmetric way to describe this abstract group is the following. There are any involutions whose product is one. Okay, so th this is a hyperelliptic group. Uh, I will uh, use this number instead of n, instead of genus. It is more comfortable for me in this talk. Uh, so what? Uh, what else? Uh, This conference is uh, one of the uh, purposes of this conference is to study so-called Hyatt Muller theory. Uh, there are several views on several glan glances on, on this subject, but uh, for me is more simple way is the following. We take some group any group, any discrete group, abstract group, and a, a semi-simple group, and consider all representations from G to L, uh, mod conjugation by Lie group. So we, in fact, uh, this quotient 
described described describes um, geometrical way of viewing representation, because conjugation is just moving. OK. Uh, this quotient is called character variety. And this variety almost always has many components. And we, we are interested in finding all so-called hitching components. The hitching component is a one that um, is constituted completely by discrete and faithful representations. Uh, for many, most of components are not hitching. Well, uh, there are three surveys last year devoted to the, devoted to they list a lot of hitching non hitching components but um, as as far as i understood uh, there is no nobody knows hitching component for th for this group uh, for this Lee group, uh, where group G is fundamental, is surface group, fundamental group of Riemann surface. Uh, so at the end of my talk, if time will allow, uh, I will discuss, I think I found out some hitching components in this case. First unknown, if I am wrong, some experts should correct me. Maybe I, I did not found in this service. OK. So the main problem is to find out all hitching components and, if possible, to describe. And this activity is called hyatt Müller theory. Uh, why is this interesting? Because every representation uh, every representation in Hitchin components supply a surface with sort of geometry. Okay, now uh, I will go down and uh, I will speak about classic Tickmuller theory, uh, but from a little bit specific point of view. So we, we take fundamental group, surface group, Lie group, isometries of maybe preserving orientation, uh, isometries of hyperbolic plane. And uh, all components are listed are listed by, by the area of representation, where G is varying between plus minus of Euler characteristics. Okay. Uh, actually, this is part of this theorem is a PhD thesis of Goldman, and it is generalized a lot, but I will not go there. Yes, but uh, I should I should explain what area is. Well, I will not explain this for for this case. I will take G my hyperelliptic group. And uh, what is a representation of hyperelliptic group? It is just any, 
any involution, any reflections in points, okay? And the product of these reflections is one. So I will, on hyperbolic plane, this is absolute, uh, I will take an arbitrary point uh, and uh, will reflect it. Okay, every involution has a unique fixed point. It's it orientation preserving involution. It is reflection in, in some point. Uh, so uh, I will con confuse this point and the involution itself. I will write the same symbol for, for these two objects. It's more comfortable. So we reflect this arbitrary point once, then reflect again, and so on. And we will back here because the product of the involution is one, okay? So we get some closed piecewise geodesic curve, geodesic pieces are drawn here. And we can calculate uh, the area of this region limit bounded by, by this curve. Okay, okay, if curve is not simple as I drawn, what does it limit? It doesn't matter. If it is simple, we can calculate um, area in the following way. We take primitive of uh, two form of area to form and integrate along the curve this primitive. Okay, so this way we, we can measure area of this strange re region which cannot be drawn. So we have this area. Well, uh, it is easy to understand that this area depends continually on P, on the choice of our point P. On the other hand, due to this relation, it is possible to show, it's quite elementary, but I will not go there, uh, it is possible to show that it is a multiple of pi, this area. Because uh, we, if we, we look for tangent vector at P and uh, trace how it changed, it will be go back at the same place. So this is sort of rotation. This is, so this is sort of proof I already give. Okay, so this area is multiple of P and twice this area give this one. Okay. Uh, now, Now I would like to consider some, some interesting description. Well, the Hitchin component is classic technical space. In fact, there are two with area positive and negative. This, we can interchange it. If we take the group of all isometries, they, they are conjugated, changing uh, orientation. So, but if we take this uh, connected subgroup, so we, uh, we, we get a couple of Tickmuller spaces. Okay. Uh, now I, I'll go to this part. 
we find find out all hitching components in this classical case. And I would like to describe, well, a similar effect will, can, be, can be shown for hyperelliptic group. Mm. Well, maybe this is a, a good moment to discuss how surface group is sitting inside of hyperlytic group. So we have even N here, and we can see the subgroup of index 2, or in terms of areas, it is, it is of even length words in, in terms of areas. Uh, and uh, so it is generated by all these G I's. Uh, and um, we can just write down uh, defining relations in terms of these generators. It is easy exercise in elementary theory of group that this will be these two relations. No, that when we are when we will ask some student to get us to describe surface group, fundamental group of Riemann surface, everybody, almost everybody except me maybe, will write down the product of commutators and so on. Okay. This is a most terrible, terrible presentation of uh, surface group. Actually, this presentation, these two relations, okay, you can easily exclude, say, G uh, any minus one and get one relation, but you will lose some symmetry. Very important for, for, for my talk. Uh, so uh, note that we have a couple of relations, and we, we can describe fundamental group in, in other way, but for me it will be uh, convenient this way. Uh, uh, what can be, how can we treat a point in, in some component and in, in, in character variety. It is just just uh, the choice of any minus one isometries uh, and uh, that satisfies the relations written here, defining relations. Well, now uh, uh, next Next part I, I would like to show is some description of uh, so what we take. We take this Lie group, this G, hyperelliptic group, and consider uh, hitching components component in this case. So, to every representation, so I have a one, a two, three, four, etc., etc., area. We can do the following: we can join with, by geodesic these two points, two fixed points of involutions, and do the following: take the ends points on absolute, reflect them in point R3. Then we get two more points, reflect them in R4, and so on. And because of our relation, we will get 
uh, at the final moment, we will be back here. Okay, so we. We got how many points on semicycle? We got two any minus four points. On semicircle. On semicircle, we, we get uh, this num this point. And actually, what I have said uh, is a description of Tickmuller space of hyperelliptic curves. Why is this? We we do the following. We fix some geodesics, some point here. And we consider uh, on this semicircle two and minus four points. And we can restitute from these points knowing only these points, we can recover our reflections. In which way? We just join this and this. Intersection of this gives R3 and so on. So, uh, conjugate, conjugate, conjugating by uh, isometries, uh, is already killed because we fixed we fixed this geodesic and we fixed some point which will will give a, the reflections a one on this geodesic and conjugation disappears this way we can always transform by a unique conjugation this this situation to this standard one and here we have uh, to any minus four points. And um, what does it mean? This can be done for any representation of hyperelliptic group, but uh, uh, but what does it mean that it has a maximal uh, area? It means that these points, Z1, Z2, etc. Z2 to n minus, minus 4 are going in counterclockwise direction. They are listed this way. This is exactly, it is not very difficult to show, it is exactly uh, the fact that area is maximum. Okay. There is another corollary uh, which provides the universal family of curves. Well, what I'm going to say about this corollary is the following. We, um, we have some standard fundamental domain, some natural, maybe. So we, we take these two points, choose a middle point, and make Reflect it here, reflect it in R3, and so we 
we get some actually convex polygon in hyperbolic plane. And this will be a fundamental domain for, for this action of group, uh, for this discrete action of group. So, okay. When we, we take, say, uh, Müller space of hyperelliptic group, multiplied by uh, hyperbolic plane, and we act by a subgroup of index two of hyperelliptic group, act here, but this action, of course, depends on this coordinate. Because given a representation, given point in Tickmuller space or Tickmuller space of hyperelliptic curves, we get some action and up to conjugation by Lie group, and we get this. So we have action of this group, abstract group, on this product. Okay, uh, at each phi bit x. So uh, the quotient will provide what? Will provide a universal family of curves for every point of hyperelliptic uh, or usual Tickmiller space. As, as a fiber will be the corresponding curve, marked curve, because uh, Tickmiller space is the space of Okay. Well, now maybe I can go to to this theorem. So we take this genus, at least two, define this number n, and we consider classical Tickmuller space, T curled n, and I hope I, I will give a sketch detailed sketch of the proof how this Tickmuller space is fibered twice over the Tickmuller space of high realistic curves. So we have already some description of this Tickmuller space. I, I think it is quite handy. It is easy to just list of points or semicircle. Uh, So we have two bundles, and uh, so we, we, we get some map to this product. And this map is actually an embedding. And if we restrict it to hyper elliptic curves sitting here, it will be just diagonal to every. So Saying in other words, to every curve, we can associate a couple of hyperelliptic ones so that they, these two hyperelliptic ones recover the original arbitrary curve. And to what we associate to hyperelliptic curve, twice we associate itself. I think this is this is interesting fact. The only problem, well, maybe uh, maybe I should mention something that I planned to say at the end. Uh, I, 
I, I'm not sure, I have no idea is this true or not, but maybe the same theorem is valid for higher Chick Miller theory. Of course, the proof I will sketch here will not work there because it is quite two dimensional and nothing but uh, providing some conceptual proof maybe a new proof may may give i don't know this is a, one of the problem i would like to to state so okay Uh, let us begin the proof. First thing uh, we should take into account that this space is connected. It is known fact. Really, a technical space is a ball of certain dimension, open ball. Okay. Uh, and then another fact, fact it was, uh, it is drawn here. Uh, well, another fact, if we have, okay, let us start the proof. So we get some discrete subgroup of isometries of hyperbolic plane. But written down in terms of these generators and defining relations. Okay, first fact, well-known fact, is that every isometry in this group, this is fundamental group of a Riemann surface or of, of a curve, uh, is hyperbolic. What is hyperbolic isometry? I will, if somebody, it has some axis in term hyperbolic isometry. This is axis. This is geodesic. Along this geodesic, hyperbolic isometry is just translating for some number. Uh, outside of this geodesic, there are actually these geodesics provide the one parameter family of, of hyperbolic isometries. And uh, we have the action points are, points are on equidistant curves. The image of a point lives on equidistant curve to this geodesic. Okay. So every element different from the identity is hyperbolic isometry. And the following fact is not very difficult, but uh, in original proof of the theorem, this was, was gap. Uh, I claim this. In, uh, it was given some short proof of this fact was given by Viktor Gerasimov, who, who was going to participate in this conference, but did not. Uh, so for every two isometries, they are hyperbolic with different axes. They, the axis cannot intersect on the absolute, okay? About 10 lines of proof, but I will not go, I will not show this proof. So we accept this fact. Well, now, uh, 
Uh, but on this situation is impossible. And now let us look at hyperelliptic curve, hyperelliptic situation. Every gy is what? gy is where it is written is the product ry and then rn. Okay? So gy is reflection in ry and in rn. Okay? This will give a hyperbolic isometry with this axis joining these two points. So we can see in hyperelliptic case that all so denote by gy gi uh, the axis of gi so all this axis gi intersect in this point in hyperelliptic case this is uh, really characterization of hyperelliptic curve. Okay. Well, now, using the fact that tick Miller space is continued, connected, we can go from hyperelliptic curve to an arbitrary curve, but all axis of all GIs will intersect for the reason of continuity. They intersect at the beginning and all our changing, all our paths is continued. And we cannot, we have some intersections, this intersection cannot disappear because of this impossibility, because of this fact I, I mentioned, okay? There are two cases for, for geodesics, three cases. Geodesic can be ultra parallel, can be tangent, and can, and can be intersect. So this, after we know that this case is impossible for a axis of our GIs, uh, we always have intersection. Okay. Now we do the following game. We take axis of G1, G capital one, and uh, every GI with I between, strongly between one and N, intersect this axis in some point. We denote this point by Ti. Okay? There is a unique point. Well, we, we do some strange thing. I will explain now. We introduce, we have so, we have T2, etc t any minus one. But we call t any minus one by t one. Okay? And also we introduce, po and this will be called also, this point will be s any. Well, now I will introduce points s i. This is easy fact that every hyperbolic isometry, every isometry of a line is a, if, if we fix some point Ti, is a, in a unique way can be written as product of two involutions. The translation by this Isometry is just uh, twice this distance, okay? From 
is y i to t y t i okay so th this way we we find in a unique way this point s i i for any i and also as we had denoted this t i t1 we had this point t1 we can find s1 for for which we we get in turn for this relation for e strongly between 1 and n we constructed in a unique way this point ACI, but, but uh, for e equal to 1 we also find because we, we took this point to 1 we also find point s1 given this equality so we get this relation uh, this, this expression for every for every generator and now we we just write down both defining relations in these terms so what we do this is g n minus 1 as every t and s is involution so making inverse it is itself so this is g any minus 2 inverse and so on so here it is written the first relation okay similarly uh, we can write down the second relation here is g n minus 1 inverse here is g n is minus any minus two and so on next what we do well we call this guy right here by s n so I, I just change it so we I just rewrite this this is just another letter so and uh, I, uh, nothing changed just the name of reflection and here second relation I do the following I take t1 put it at the beginning at the left side we, ca we can change cyclically uh, relation so we get so here will be t1 but, but t1 is again t any uh, s any so we can put here t any uh, s any and we we arrive at these two relations well okay now I will do the following I note I will move these pieces of a couple of T's to the right in which way uh, just uh, so here is ACI and I, I can write this in, in the following way H ACI H minus 1 using the conjugation okay so in this way my H passed a little bit to the right and uh, ACI get conjugated okay 
So this is my first age. I will apply such a procedure. It will go here. Again, I, I will write down the first relation in the following way. This is a n, a n minus one, the same. This is s n minus two. Uh, and the same. And next A will be this A C N, N minus three conjugated by this H. Okay? And my hyperbolic isometry, a couple of reflections, do not forget that all T's leaves on, the, on the same geodesic, on the axis G1. Okay? So the product of couple of reflections is hyperbolic isometry with this axis. Well, next, here, this couple of T's and next couple of T's will, will join, will give another hyperbolic isometry, and I will do the, the same trick at the end so each A is ACI conjugated by a certain uh, uh, hyperbolic isometry with the, with the axis G1. Okay. And at the end of my proceeding, uh, I will get this term at the end. So I, this, this is what I will call A1. What is A1? A1 is a product uh, of even number of reflections, so of some hyperbolic isometry with this fixed axis G1, and one more reflection whose fixed point, uh, okay, one more reflection. Uh, Ah, S1 is a reflection in a point on the same geodesic G1. Okay, so it is immediately that this is a reflection. Just half of this uh, hyperbolic we, we apply, we, we should. This is a reflection in some point on this geodesic. Because the product of odd number of reflections in points of some geodesics is a reflection in some point. Because this group, group of isometry of, of a line is sort of general group. So this is a line. This is A and extended by, by one reflection. OK. Uh, in fact, we can find explicit e expressions in terms of T's for this UI. Every moment uh, it is quite explicit. And also, okay, we do the following. Uh, we do the same game for this second relation. We get Bn, Bn minus one, this S n minus two conjugated by this hyper, uh, hyperbolic isometry will be Bn minus two and so on. And at the end we will accumulate this isometry 
for a similar reason, it will be reflection in a point on this geodesic. And we, we call this reflection by B1. Well, now we, we got a couple of representations of hyper, uh, uh, hyper elliptic group. Yet, we, we do not know if this representation is discrete. So we, we should show that the representations we got here, both with A's and B's, these representations are discrete. Again, I will use the following fact. The area of representation, well, first, uh, first remark. Uh, our construction of the, this couple of representations depends continue, continuously on uh, our GN. Because we just take what is the representation of gen. It's just choice of any minus one hyperbolic isometries. And when we move a little bit representation, uh, the axes are moving in the continual way and so on. So all points we find out here, we, we construct it here, all points depend continuously on, on, on the choice of G. Uh, if G uh, GN by at the beginning was a discrete subgroup of a group of isometries. Uh, if uh, this group was hyperelliptic, it is easy to calculate that all our uh, calculation, it is easy to see that we will get the same representation just following uh, this construction. So we, we get, uh, if our representation comes from hyperelliptic cause or say, this group is index two subgroup and some discrete hyperelliptic subgroup of group of isometries of, of plane of the plane. So we, we get itself. And in this case, so the area of each representation is maximal and it it lives in Hitchin component. Well when we start from hyperelliptic and go to an arbitrary discrete representation of GN, well, we can do this because tip measure space is connected, uh, the area cannot change because the area is a multiple of pi. And it depends continuously. So the area continue be maximal, so these two representations are mm, are discrete. Okay. What we got? We, we got, well, I will not show that this is fiber, this is bundle, uh, both. And when we associate to every to an arbitrary curve, a couple of hyperelliptic ones. And so we, we, we get this map. Actually, uh, looking at all details and using, say, Klein model of uh, hyperbolic plane, we can see that everything we are doing uh, 
is real algebraic. Every calculation is polynomial in terms of in terms of Klein model. Uh, okay. Now uh, I, I will say a few words about why is this embedding. Well, uh, uh, we should observe that bi also is conjugated to SY, SI, so in conjugated uh, by means of uh, some hyperelliptic, uh, hyperbolic isometry uh, whose axis is G1. Because we constructed this BI in a similar way and we had here reflections in points in this geodesic G1, G capital one. And these expressions in terms of T's are, are quite explicit. I will not write down them, this is too bulky, but we can express them. Uh, what should I show for, for, for providing the, this embedding? I should recover my arbitrary curve arbitrary representations from these two representations. So this A is unknown, B is unknown. Okay. Uh, so I, I should I should restitute uh, I should recover GIs. But it suffices to recover just T's. Why? Because if we know T is, if we know uh, this use, there are explicit expression. Oops. Ah. Uh, we know this explicit ex expressions in terms of T, so knowing A's we find our S's, okay? So it suffices to, to recover T's. But f for this purpose, we, we do the following. We, we write down this H, what we already know, why, which T's are known. We know We know T1 because T1 is SN and also TN. These two are known. They are actually equal. But as AN is SN, so SN is known and T1 is known. And then we write down these explicit expressions for H i's. Okay, one more observation. We have a couple of points on hyperbolic plane and uh, the fixed points of these two reflections. And there is a unique hyperbolic isometry that maps one point to another if we fix the axis of this isometry. 
because of this picture. Hyperbolic isometry with this axis, well, if we can move one point to another with this hyperbolic isometry with this axis, this hyperbolic isometry is unit. Well, it can be the identity, but okay, let us tr treat identity as hyperbolic isometry. So, uh, a1, Ai, and Bi are known. So we find out this H, isometry with this axis, G1, G capital 1. Knowing bulk expressions, explicit expressions for this Hi, we can, knowing T1, T n minus 1, we, we can express these two. The, the, uh, all keys in terms using this explicit expression. Well, uh, I'm sorry uh, I have tortured you with this proof, but well, at least uh, uh, you can see that technology is really low and and this is one more argument to provide a more conceptual proof. There are some hints for this proof, but uh, for me, they were not sufficient to, to find out a, a good proof. Well, uh, actually, if somebody is interested in, in all the details, is just bulky calculations, but quite elementary, that I was, was not shown, uh, that was not shown. Uh, okay, so uh, what we are really doing? We find out some points, S's and T's, and we moved in a certain way every S by means of a, a quite explicit isometry with axis G1. So we moved every point S uh, in a certain way. So we can, we can say, we, we can treat this theorem, and this is why, how I, I discovered this fact, this fact. I tried to, to make a, a, an arbitrary curve or representation of this group uh, uh, to make it hyperlytic. So in some way, I changed this point, these points, but uh, these points were changed with moving them with uh, hyperbolic isometry with this vertical axis. Uh, and uh, in one way, I got one hyperelliptic curve, and in another way, I got another. Okay, so one curve measure, measures uh, how long was, wh wh what, is, what is defect to be not hyperelliptic. Well, but this hint is insufficient for me, at least, to provide a good proof. And uh, well, uh, it is not state, stated in the theorem, but uh, the fibers of each bundle can be explicitly described, but it is not very interesting to show how to do this. Uh, and finally, I would like to, to speak a little bit on what I think 
So I, I take this group. So uh, now I'm going to Hayek Muller theory. And I would like to, I would like to, well, the group G will be hyperlytic group. Uh, there is some, some ideology how to, if you did something with hyperlytic representation, you can do the same with an arbitrary, just treating every isometry, just considering the words of even lens in terms of reflections. If you have an, an arbitrary uh, representation of surface group, you cannot write, so this, this group is not part, we, we cannot find this HN, but we can imagine it outside of isometry group and writing all even words in terms of this Aries, this expression has some sense. They leave here. So in the isometry, and so we can do some geometry with them and, and uh, our consideration with hyperlytic can be transformated, uh, can be va valid to, to an arbitrary. Okay, so uh, this is why I first consider uh, this discrete, this, this group. Yeah. And, uh, well, so this group is acting where? Uh, we take A real projectivization of, of this four dimensional space, okay? Of forms with signature 2 2, uh, uh, space with the form with uh, the form of signature 2 2, and this group acts there. Uh, well, when we we will have a representation every AI will go to some involution here. What are involutions? Involutions are in terms of these sections, they are Okay, this space has some pseudo Riemann geometry. I will not enter this subject, but it is easy. I have no time to say about this geometry. This space has some natural, depending on the form of given signature, some pseudo Riemann geometry. No place it is Riemann. Uh, there are positive points, negative points, and isotropic points there. Isotropic points, so th this is R by three, okay? So uh, isotropic points form some which divides the projective space, three-dimensional space, in a couple of solid talks. In a similar way, if we projectivize just by positive numbers, we will get sphere, and this famous decomposition of sphere in a couple of solid talks. Uh, so, 
What are geodesics? Geodesics is any curve, uh, any line. So if we take one dimensional line here and put it in the projective, ah, two dimensional. Dimension is two. Two dimensional subspace here where the form is not identically zero. Okay. There are some two dimensional subspaces here where the form is identically zero. But if we take uh, such two dimensional and pr uh, put it I in the projective space, we get so, uh, a curve, a circle, in fact, which will be geodesic with, uh, geodesic with respect to say, the Riemannian structure. This structure does not work on this. Uh, this torus is absolute. Outside of this torus, outside of this torus, we have pseudo-Riemannian matrix. Inside, we have positive points. Outside, we have negative points. OK? So uh, yeah, I, I I would like to, to indicate, well, in, in fact, this is, a, a, as far as I understood reading this um, service, uh, all known Hitchin components can be obtained in the following way. We embed into Lie group, into semi-simple Lie group, we embed uh, the group of isometers of hyperbolic plane, take some discrete and faithful representation of a surface group there, and consider a component that contains this one. All Hitchin components has this flavor. They are, in fact, well, uh, I'm not original here. The, we take what we can take. We take... Um, We take a positive point, so some point. We consider its orthogonal with respect to the form here. Projectivizing this orthogonal three dimensional in, in linear terms, but two dimensional in projective terms, this projective plane will provide in positive part will provide a disk. In negative part, it will provide Möbius band. OK? Now, we are positive. And here, the geometry induced here will be Riemannian, will be geometry, uh, exactly geometry of hyperbolic. This will be hyperbolic plane. I have some description of what is Hitchin component in this, uh, in this way. And so I have some representations which are discrete, obviously. And then I take a component with respect to a larger group. OK, so I, I can deform it. And uh, I have good understanding. Uh, I can, I have some description of this component. Uh, more or less the following. Uh, so. We'll just sketch of this. Ah, OK. I forgot to say that we have our reflections. Our reflection can be reflection in positive point, reflection in negative point, and reflection in a geodesic. OK? 
well, negative, positive, we, we have this relation. If all reflection here are positive, are in positive points, I am satisfied. If one of them, if it, this is mixture, one is positive or negative, or some reflection is reflection in a geodesic, my guess is that this will not give a component, a hitching component. Okay, so the only possible uh, way to, to get a hitching component is, uh, well, it's not guess, it is, it can be shown, I, I, I think. Uh, we take all reflection of the same sign, say positive because positive and negative, they are dual here. So what, what are we, ah, by the way, the signature on this orthogonal is plus minus one, because P is positive. Uh, I take some representation, plain representation, I, I have some representation, discrete representation of hyperelliptic group. So uh, I have some points, A1, A2, A3. Moreover, it can be shown that the product of these three consecutive with respect to uh, reflections is, is hyperbolic isometry. Uh, and so, I do the following. I can cut this pentagon. Into, so, I, I have some representation, discrete and faithful representation of hyperlytic group. I, I can change these three by these two, or inverse. Okay, so I have some H5 representation. Okay, my any became odd, but everything will work, or not everything, but most of the thing will work for odd any. And uh, I have the rest. Okay, what is it hard to, to describe this component? I, I, I can say the following. We can several times do the following. We take this geodesic, leading these two points, or say the axis of this product, this product will provide, this is one requirement, uh, uh, a geodesic plane of this signature, plus, minus, minus. Uh, uh, and we can move, rotate around this geodesic, this plane. This rotation is not actually a rotation. If we consider a uh, metric from it is pseudo Riemannian, it will be circle uh, has is not orthogonal group. It is uh, it is a hyperbolic geodesic. Here is one usual geodesic, here is another, okay? Well, we cannot go through, we, ca we cannot change signature of this plane. So we have some, some limits, this is our rotations. We have some limits for this rotation. We can, when we rotate, we have de degenerated plane signature zero or something at this point. And here we have another signature, plus, plus, minus. Okay, so we have some some freedom for this move limited strictly by these two points. So we can move this point a little bit and then by induction, okay? So we, we can deform a plane representation, plane 
discrete representation by doing this several times and vice versa. We can take an arbitrary point on this component and going back to a, a plain one. So I, I began four minutes later, so I'm done. Sorry. <laughs>